Hello, and this is my video review for the MX3 Android TV box. This box is uh, pretty cool. I um, have had an opportunity to test it out now for about, um, about a couple of weeks now, and it does pretty much everything I want it to do as far as an Android TV box is concerned. Uh, a lot of people are interested in finally cutting cable from... Um, from their uh, subscription services because it just it's ridiculous when you pay a lot of money for cable TV and this box among giving you Android on your television it also allows you to do that through a program that's listed as XBMC here it's now called Cody so this is basically what the box is um, it's a quad core box uh, it's capable of supporting uh, 1080p videos, well actually 4K videos, um, just to show you what it looks like on the box here. Um, they show you all the different types of ports. This is one of the best things about this box is the, uh, the amount of ports that they give you. Um, it connects wirelessly, it connects through Ethernet. Uh, it also has a uh, HDMI connection. If you wanted to, you could look over here. I don't know if you can really see it, but there's even a port for optical cable inputs. Uh, it has two USB ports, which is great. Um, I find that uh, uh, it's always nice to have extra USB ports. You can plug an external hard drive on there. Or uh, a USB a thumbstick, and you know, load movies on it, load games, load whatever you want, pretty much. The purpose behind this box, I guess, is really to to kind of give like a PC like experience to your TV, which is which is good, right? If anyone who uses Android, um, you know, if they're familiar with the Android platform, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with Android, so. It's great to have um, a box like this uh, that allows you to do that to your television, even though there's a lot of smart TVs out there. The box itself is currently listed at $115 Canadian on Amazon.ca, so it works out to about $120. Bucks. Now, if you're comparing that to, like, um, like, say, an Apple TV, you might be spending a little bit more money, even a Roku box, too. I'd probably prefer to get this over a Roku box because it just allows you more customizability and uh, certainly less restrictions than what you would get with an Apple TV. So, um, just opening this up, I actually unboxed this already and I've had it set up, but uh, to kind of show you some of the things that come with it, you do get this nice little letter from the seller that will tell you, um, you know, just how much they're committed to customer support and just, you know, providing you with any details and help, uh, even how to update the firmware as well. Uh, you get an Android TV manual, which, uh, strangely enough, is, let's see, up. Uh, the cover's on the back of it, so it's kind of funny, but anyways, it gives you very, very basic instructions on how to operate the device. Uh, you do get a couple of cords that come along with it too, like an extended USB dongle. Um, nice little packaging too with the box, because it basically tells you what's in here, so, right? And that's basically what it looks like. So as far as unboxing is concerned, that's pretty much what you get. Oh, you also get, um, they give you an HDMI cord. They also give you a, um, uh, a remote, which I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes. But that's pretty much what's in the box, including the device, of course. So this is basically what the box looks like, uh, out of the box, of course. Uh, a little dusty, I've been kind of using it for a little bit. Um, there you go, you've got your USB ports. There's even a support here for uh, SD card, which is good. So just a, a lot of options as far as like memory is concerned. There is an AV button here. If you take a look at this, you'll see that there is an AV adapter. So you could plug this in um, to an old school television with audio video cables and they do give you that cord I forgot to mention that in the unboxing portion but it's a it's a very nice box it's pretty solid and you know it's got a 4k logo on it and basically this is the main power button but um, other than that it's uh, it's pretty simple the quality seems pretty good right there, there are quite a few Android TV boxes out there on the market 
But uh, for the price, I would say that this one is probably the best rated on um, on Amazon right now. Uh, it does have two gigabytes of RAM. It has an eight gigabyte internal storage. It's um, apparently a quad core processor, so it's very very fast. It's capable of handling. Um, you know, uh, high intensity apps like games and whatever that require a lot of hardware. Uh, it's got a pretty good GPU on it apparently too. So obviously if it's going to display 4K, uh, it's also 3D ready too. So it's capable of showing 3D ready uh, films as well. So that's basically what the box looks like. Okay, so this is the remote that comes with the MX3 Android TV box. It's a pretty basic remote, but it does everything I need it to do, and uh, it's very easy to navigate with. Um, I'll just go through a quick rundown of some of the buttons that you got here. Now, in the previous video, I mentioned that uh, there are a lot of USB ports, there's even an SD card slot, so um, these buttons are shortcut buttons that allow you to play whatever videos you'd like, whatever music you'd like. Um, seeing it is an Android box, you can click this and it will take you to a main menu of all the different apps that are allowed or available. Um, there's also this um, web button that will take you right to the web browser. Um, there are standalone volume buttons, so if you do have this connected to a receiver, uh, you can basically control the volume of the box from this control. Um, of course, you got your uh, two move forward buttons, move backward buttons, a nice convenient home button here too to take you to the main menu. So depending, it doesn't matter what app you're using, you just hit that button and it'll take you back. There's also the return button, which allows you to work as a back function. So if you are uh, several screens advanced, you can just hit this and it will take you back. Uh, these arrow keys are very responsive. I know some of the other videos that I've seen or reviews that I've seen, they say that um, you know there's a bit of a delay. I haven't really noticed that with using any of these keys. There's also a mouse pointer here. So when you hit that, this convenient looking pointer comes up on screen and you just use these keys to navigate. Um, and of course you've got your number keys here. The remote itself is actually really, really nice to use, but when you're using an Android TV box, I don't really recommend using this. I highly suggest getting like a keyboard. And that's basically what I have here. I picked up a Logitech um, keyboard and it's pretty cool actually. Like, I mean, you've got the benefit of having an actual keyboard with keys and a tracking screen. So I would definitely choose this over this remote any day, but, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it certainly serves its purpose. It's not the um, most convenient way of controlling the box, but it certainly does work, so. Okay, so to continue the review, this is basically what the MX3 interface looks like. And any seasoned Android user will probably look at this and say, hey, this doesn't look anything like stock Android. And you're right, it doesn't. It's actually a very, very simplified skin. Uh, geared primarily towards uh, like a media center type of interface and I think it's pretty good it's it's nice and simple uh, it's designed for people who've never used Android before uh, there it consists of six big tabs here there's online video my recommended uh, or my recommend I guess settings my apps local and this convenient tab over here that says clean memory um, on the bottom here, you've got a nice quick access bar to like any of your favorite apps. Like I've got Kodi as a favorite, I've got the Google Play Store as a favorite, Netflix and, and uh, YouTube as well. But um, it's like I said, it's a very, very simple interface. You can click on one of these tabs. Uh, this is the one for online video and I could basically add whichever um, apps I would like to add on this. And uh, it's pretty simple. You just click on this add button right here, select whatever app you want. Um, we'll just say Google search for now. I'll click out of it and then boom, it's automatically added onto the, um, into this folder. Um, it's just as easy to remove it as well. I can click on this, go back to Google search, uncheck it and then back to business. So. Uh, the really, really cool thing about this box, too, is the fact that uh, you've got this clean memory feature here. 
So if you're finding that you're um, running a couple of apps, it will actually give you a percentage here in the bottom here telling you how much uh, memory is currently used. And if you just click on this, uh, this button, it will basically close any of the apps that are currently using any memory right now. So that's a, a nice convenient tab too. I'll just give you a quick look at what the settings look like as well. I currently have this thing connected through Ethernet. I find it's the best possible connection that I can get. However, you can connect it through Wi-Fi and it does have a really good Wi-Fi adapter on it as well too. Um, I've got three other Android media box devices. I have a Minex Neo X7, I've got an Android stick and I've also got um, my phone as well. And I find that uh, of of the three, uh, basically, uh, well, of the compared to like the Mine X and compared to the Android Stick, this has definitely the better Wi-Fi adapter. It's it's much much easier to to pick up a signal with. But in any case, I usually keep it on Ethernet. Um, clicking on the Display tab, it these are these settings are very very simplified for people who don't really know how to play around with any of these settings. So you can auto de detect your HDMI settings if you haven't hooked up to a TV. I've got it hooked up to a projector right now and it's outputting at 1080p at 60 hertz. Um, you can also set how long you want the screensaver to pop on. Uh, if you click on the advanced setting, it gives you a little more uh, information. It's really, really cool because um, you can actually operate this device off of Google TV remote. and. If you download that app for your Android phone or your um, iPhone, I think you could get it for your iPhone, I don't know, but um, you could basically control this entire box off of that remote. And it's actually a very, very good and functional remote, so you know it's, uh, it's nice that it allows you to do that. Uh, Miracast, I don't really use Miracast, I use another program called Bubble UPMP, and I find that works better. Uh, you also get your audio, uh, you can configure it so that it, it does everything automatically for you. I've got mine set up through HDMI pass-through. Now if I click on the other tab, this is a very, very basic uh, display of information about your box, right? So it shows you the model number MX3, current ver version is Android 4.4.2. I think that there is a system update there. I haven't actually done one yet because, you know, it's doing everything I needed to, but uh, the company that I purchased this from, they did provide me with additional support if I wanted to upgrade my box, like the firmware and whatnot. Uh, if you click on the system update tab, it actually allows you to do this in a couple of ways. One, you can actually click on it to update it online, or you could download the actual firmware update, load it onto a USB stick, and then just update it from uh, one of these um, options here. So it's nice that they give you that feature to do it with. If you're more into Android, you can click on to more settings and the more seasoned Android user will probably recognize this. this is basically what Android looks like. So in this menu, you basically get your Wi-Fi options. This box is enabled with Bluetooth, so you can use Bluetooth. And you'll see that pretty much all of the regular stuff is here too, how to add your accounts, uh, more of the system options about the media box. Um, I don't have any services installed. The other really cool thing about this box too is that, you know, even though it is a media center box, you don't necessarily have to use it as a media center. Like uh, if you have um, Microsoft Office 365, for example, you could load it on this and you could basically type out all your documents or create a PowerPoint presentation. It does support wireless printing, so as you can see here, and that's that's really more of an Android thing. It's not really anything significant to the box, but uh, just to kind of give you a little more versatility of what this box can do. Uh, when we click on this, we can see you know pretty much the same details that we'd seen before um, from that very, very basic tab. And if you wanted to, I believe that you can update if uh, using this menu as well too. I haven't, like I said, I haven't tried it before, so I don't really know how effective it is, but other than that, that's pretty much what the interface looks like. Um, I have run an Antutu benchmark for anyone curious about how well the hardware is on this. And after completing the test, it scores 39,906, which is actually very, very good for, for a media box. Um, just to give you an idea of how that ranks, it's just below a Samsung Galaxy S5 in terms of performance. Uh, oh, for people who don't know what Antutu Benchmark is, is it, it basically just tests the hardware of your 
device, whether it's a cell phone or a tablet or whatever, and it shows you how it ranks next to all these other ones. My phone is actually a OnePlus One, so according to this, it's one of the top three, but um, how it ranks, like uh, if we scroll down a little bit here, it's uh, definitely above a Google Nexus 5, above an LG uh, G3, HTC One and stuff. So this actually has really, really good processing power and it's capable of playing like, you know, some graphically intense games like um, that Riptide and Real Racing and whatnot. But um, if we click on the info tab here, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this too well or not. Let me see if I can zoom in on uh, some of the specs of this uh, this box. Yeah, it's a little bit blurry, but you can see it's a quad-core processor. It's got um, a Mali 450 MP renderer. It's got, uh, it's it, it does claim that they have uh, two gigabytes of RAM, but it's closer to like 1600, um, or, you know, basically 1.6 gigabytes of RAM. Um, the internal storage too is eight gigabytes, which isn't really a lot to play around with. So my personal belief is, is that like, I mean, this is a perfect media box, right? But the, uh, I wouldn't really want to use it for like games because it doesn't have a very big enough internal storage to download like, you know, like a two or three gigabyte game. Although the hardware is certainly capable of, of handling that. Um, let me see if there are any more details that I can scroll down with. Um, yeah, other than that, it's, um, it's, it's a pretty good Android box, right? And anyone looking to get, um, anybody looking at, uh, exploring the options of an Android media box, you couldn't really go too wrong with this. Now, I know that the seller of this particular box has a couple of different boxes, actually. And, uh, you could get a box that's very similar to this, that's probably... I don't know, I think it's about a hundred bucks. I bought this one for about 115 and it worked out to about 120 after tax. But um, I would highly recommend anyone looking to get a box, like an Android TV box, to get this one. It's definitely one of the most popular ones on Amazon right now. And uh, most people are probably gonna buy it because it runs Kodi. It, I'm not gonna go into the details about Kodi, but it runs it flawlessly. I've never had a problem with it. Um, it's pretty easy to update sources and it works very, very effectively. So this is my review of the MX3 Android TV box. Thank you very much for watching.